Would you believe me if I told you that there is an organization within the UN that's actively involved in supporting, funding, and inciting terrorist activities? What if I told you that it's actually been going on for years and has been publicly exposed numerous times? It's just that the world has always chosen to turn a blind eye. It gets even worse, actually. A new report has recently surfaced exposing the fact that 12 United Nations employees actually participated in the massacre in Israel on October 7th. That's right, a UN teacher in Gaza by day and an animalistic Jew-killing terrorist by night. I'd say the time has come to permanently shutter this awful organization, and it actually looks like we might be on our way towards just that. All of those details and much more right here on today's show. I'm Luke Hilton, this is The Israel Guys. And welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of anti-Israel propaganda and Jew hatred, you should have a connection to the land and people of Israel. Coming to you live from the Mount of Blessing in Israel's biblical heartland, falsely labeled the Occupied West Bank. That's right, we're on the Mount of Blessing today. Uh, I might hear a little rain in the background. It's cold and rainy in the land of Israel, but it's good because they need that rain. So guys... Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, or follow us if you're on uh, listening platforms or on Rumble, Facebook, wherever it is. Give us a follow. Let me know in the comments if you're a new subscriber or viewer to the channel. Wanted to remind you again, we have upcoming volunteer programs in the land of Israel, the men's pruning trip, which starts end of February. Uh, time's running out to register for that. So if you're a man and you would like to get your hands dirty and support Israel during this time of war, check out serveisrael.com slash volunteer. We'll have the direct link in the description below. We also have a tree planting trip where you get to come to Israel, plant trees, and celebrate Passover. That one's for the whole family. We have a special ops trip for young people um, in May, or sorry, June and July. All of those trips, check them out at serveisrael.com slash volunteer. Link in the description below. You're wondering, come to Israel during wartime? That's right. Come to Israel and stand with her during her time of greatest need. So I'm going to get into why the UNRWA is just the worst possible organization you can imagine, why they're about to be shuttered, and why that is a very, very good thing for everyone involved, including Palestinian Arabs living in Gaza or the West Bank themselves. But I want to tell you a quick story I saw on Twitter or X this week um, because you have to hear this. Um this story was reported by Israeli journalist Avishai Greenzag, and I got it from uh, Ori Miller's X page, uh, Twitter page. Khan Yunus, which is the, in the south of Gaza, and which is where the IDF is doing a lot of their fighting right now, a lot of the intense fighting going on. Um, a brigade in the IDF was about to go into a certain area, and they put up a drone to check the area first. The drone's up. It's flying by an apartment building. Goes, they see on the drone through the window there is an old Muslim lady handcuffed to her bed. Now, at first, they have to be suspicious because Hamas is, is notorious for using um, civilians as human shields to try to lure the IDF into a trap, right? So they check it out. They go through all the protocol to make sure there's no booby traps waiting for them, right? And then they send in a, an Arabic-speaking uh, officer to go check out what's going on. They find a 75-year-old Muslim lady handcuffed to her bed. Her hands are swollen. She's completely dehydrated. She's in very poor health. They find out. Her family flees the city. Two Hamas terrorists come into her apartment dressed in IDF uniforms. They tie her to her bed, handcuff her to her bed, and they tell her to sit and they instruct her. Anybody who comes, tell them that Israel did this to you. Tell them that the IDF did this to you. Obviously, the IDF rescued her. They gave her medical attention. And uh, without them, she would be dead right now. And not only that. But uh, they were, if she hadn't actually chosen to tell the truth, because obviously she sees the IDF as her rescuers, then the world would be viewing this story on CNN right now as the poor, innocent, old Palestinian lady handcuffed to her bed and left to die by the IDF. It just makes you wonder, should you believe every story you see in the media, especially coming out of Gaza, or should you question pretty much every story that comes out of Gaza right now? So... We're going to get to the downfall of the UNRWA. Way too many letters. Stands for United Nations Relief and Works Agency. 
Um, so it finally comes out that it's pretty much verified right now because more and more details are breaking as I'm talking. By the time you watch this, you'll probably even have more details. But 12, UNRWA, by the way, the UNRWA was a, the UN agency that was established to help the Palestinian refugees, right, after uh, Israel's War of Independence in, in Israel, Gaza Strip, uh, even in uh, Jordan and Syria and I think Egypt. Um, and so it was specifically established. It's the refugee agency inside the UN specifically um, that with, whose mission is specifically to deal with and take care of Palestinian Arab refugees, right? Um, so it finally comes out. Everybody had their suspicions. It's been reported earlier on in the war, but it finally comes out. At least 12 UNRWA employees participated in the October 7th attacks, whether uh, going to the attacks themselves, whether supporting it, uh, whether helping to arm terrorists, uh, some logistical roles, whatever it is. Um, but it gets even worse than that because an Israeli hostage uh, actually reported to the media that he was kept captive in the attic in the home of one of the UN teachers. We're going to talk about that story in a second, so hang on. Um, so everybody knows, has known for years, that UNRWA, it's just a lot easier to say UNRWA, and it sounds a lot worse, so, you know, uh, it's corrupt. Everybody's known that they're corrupt. Rockets have been found in their schools and hospitals. Um, their ties to terrorism have very, been very blatantly apparent for years. School curriculum that they teach in Gaza and Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, have taught Arab children to hate Jews. Um, Obviously, that's true because get this, not only is it true because we've seen the curriculum, right? It's come out now. It's been very much exposed over and over. But get this, out of the thousands of terrorists that attacked Israel on October 7th, how many of them do you think went to UNRWA schools? Well, statistically, most of them. So in other words, these show, obviously, they're also indoctrinated through you know, terrorist summer camps and uh, the regime that's in power, but UNRWA is actually teaching these children to hate and commit violence against Jews. Those children grew up and, and, and participated in the October 7th attack. So you could say that UNRWA is very much to blame for the massacre that happened on October 7th. In the aftermath of tragedy, hope emerges. Israel 365 stands at the forefront of aiding the brave survivors and families affected by the harrowing events of October 7th. Over 220 lives were upended with innocent children and adults held hostage. While over 100 hostages have been released, their journey of healing has just begun. These survivors have come back to a world altered beyond recognition. Their homes were destroyed and families scattered. Today, they need more than just words. They need our action and our support. These survivors and their families have faced unimaginable challenges. But with our collective support, we can offer them more than just solace. We can offer a path to healing. Your contribution is their lifeline. It provides crucial psychological services, financial assistance, and the nurturing environment necessary for healing and rebuilding shattered lives. It won't just help individuals, it will help rebuild families and strengthen communities. It's more than a donation. It's a pledge of solidarity and hope. Join us in this noble cause together we can empower these heroes to reclaim their dreams and forge a brighter future. You can give them the promise of a better tomorrow. Support the Israeli hostages and their families today. Let's stand united to help them heal and rebuild. You can donate now by clicking the link in the description below. Will the fact that all of this is now coming out in so great detail and that you can't dispute the facts, um, is it gonna change anything for the United Nations? Well, probably not unless they actually lose all their funding, which at the moment looks like it might actually happen. And by the way, don't forget, UNRWA is the only UN agency in the war, or in the United Nations dealing with refugees that actually does not allow refugees to ever lose their refugee status. Refugee status is passed on from generation to generation, meaning if you, were a, if you came out of the 1948 war, you were designated a refugee by the UN, then your children would be refugees, your grandchildren would be refugees, your great-grandchildren would be refugees. You can never lose that status, and it doesn't matter where you move to, what country you live in, you will always be a Palestinian refugee. And that's why the world thinks that there's such a massive Palestinian refugee problem today. So um, back to the the hor particularly horrific story. Um, and I want to read this from Avi Meyer's X page, uh, Twitter page, formerly former editor-in-chief, I think, or senior editor at Jerusalem Post. 
Uh, he said back in November, and then you can find this all over. Uh, it's on multiple news outlets now. We'll link all the source links down in the description below. He says back in November, we at Jerusalem Post shared journalist Almag Boker's report. So Almag uh, Boker is an Israeli journalist for Israel's Channel 13 Hebrew language TV network. Uh, shared the story that an Israeli who had been held hostage in Gaza said that he had been held captive in the home of a teacher employed at employed by UNRWA, who is also the father of 10 children. So United Nations agency, the, so someone in Gaza working for this UN agency, teaches at one of the schools. He has 10 children. And what does he do in his spare time? He just happens to hold an Israeli hostage in his attic for 50-something days, locked in with barely any food and hardly any medical attention. Um, after the after Avi Meyer posted this on X, he said, I received, received an indignant note from an UNRWA official saying that there was no evidence behind the report and demanding that the story be removed from our website. I did not comply. I read the statement from UNRWA just going on and on. The, the journalist did not pre present any evidence. We demand that you can't make public claims. Well, guess what? The story came from an actual hostage. And yeah, maybe as time goes on, there should be more and more evidence and proof of a story like this. But you're immediately going to jump on an actual hostage's testimony and say that they have nobody has a right to make claims in public just because you're embarrassed and mad that one of your employees actually kept a hostage locked in his attic for 50 days? Give me a break. Uh, funny thing is, when UNRWA actually made their statement, they were immediately slapped with a community note on Twitter listing just a few of the many instances in which UNRWA personnel were found to have celebrated or been involved in terrorism. Gotta love those community notes. Thanks, Elon Musk. Um, so the uh, saga goes on and on. This past Saturday, Germany, Scotland, and the Netherlands have joined countries who are now suspending their fund funding for UNRWA. Um, congratulations, guys. Good job for taking such a strong stand. Um, Switzerland, the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, and Finland have already suspended their funding. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, there'll be even more countries suspending funny because money, funny money. Yeah, it is funny money, sad money actually, because guess what? The people getting that money don't need it. I was just reading and didn't have time to get it all the, all the way in my notes, but I was just reading IDF soldiers reporting going into mansion after mansion after mansion in Gaza, beautiful houses that houses like that none of us could even dream of owning, right? They go in these houses, just the level of wealth is just beyond belief. And what do they find? UNRWA textbooks, UNRWA bags of flour, UNRWA food, UNRWA supplies. Because guess what? They're filthy rich. They don't need any help, but they're so used to just getting free stuff from the United Nations funded by all these nations I just listed from around the world that they'll take it because who wouldn't want free stuff? Uh, if we can get enough countries to suspend their, funny, uh, their, their funding, then guess what? UNRWA won't be able to function anymore. Maybe we could stop this travesty. Uh, and by the way, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, did I say that right? Uh, is now pleading, begging the world on his knees to keep funding his pet organization in the United Nations. He said, quote, any UN employee involved in acts of terror will be held accountable. Yeah, right. Including through criminal prosecution. The Secretariat is ready to cooperate with a competent authority able to prosecute the individuals in line with the Secretariat's normal procedures for such a cooperation. No, you won't, you liar. If you cared at all, you would have made sure that your, your agency didn't teach violence against Jews in your, school, uh, Jews in your schools for the last umpteen years. Um, and you would have paid attention to the fact that rockets were stored under your hospitals and inside your schools, and terrorists in Hamas were using your schools as, as headquarters to launch attacks against the Jewish people because they wanted to use them as human shields. You don't care at all. Only thing you care about is the millions and millions of dollars that UNRWA gets every single year. Israeli Ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, remarked, quote, The UN Secretary General proves again that the lives and security of the citizens of Israel are not really important to him. After years of ignoring evidence that was presented to him personally of UNRWA's support and involvement in incitement and terror, and before he holds a comprehensive investigation to find the Hamas terrorists and murderers in UNRWA, he concentrates on raising donations for the murder and terror organization. I call on all supporting nations to freeze their support and demand an in-depth investigation that will encompass all organizational staff. I'd say if UNRWA gets shut down for permanently, good riddance, but to be fair... 
I decided we'd hold a little uh, contest, okay? Well, first we'll list the pros of shutting down UNRWA, and then we'll list the cons, okay? You ready? We want to be fair. We get want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So first, the pros. The pros of shutting UNRWA down would be that Palestinian refugees might be able to actually be resettled permanently and move on with their lives, like move to other countries, lose their refugee status so that they could become citizens of other countries, get normal jobs, and then their children and grandchildren would be able to live normal lives, right? Um, Palestinians would not be stuck with their undesirable status for the rest of their lives because right now, as Palestinian refugees, guess what? No country in the world, including Arab countries, want to take them in because nobody wants to deal with the so-called Palestinian refugee problem. But if they lost that status, then they could actually go on to go to any country they wanted, more or less, and move on with their lives. Guess what else would happen? Pros of shutting UNRWA down. Violence and terrorism against Jews would go down because they would lose the incitement and the supplies and the funding to actually attack Jews. Um, and then the world could focus on actual solutions for Arabs who need help in Gaza and Judea and Samaria. So those are the pros of shutting UNRWA down. So now we will list the cons. This is where you're supposed to insert crickets because there's no cons. No cons of shutting UNRWA down. So uh, let's join all the countries that have stopped their funding to UNRWA and shut this corrupt organization down. Like I said, so many people, yes, there probably are people that actually need help, but they're not getting the help they need. And so many of them actually don't need help. And the millions and millions of dollars are going to line the pockets uh, of the corrupt leaders, line the top pockets of terrorists, um, and going to actually fund violence and, and hate and propaganda against Israel and the Jewish people. Guys, please consider supporting the work of Israel 365 as they work to help the hostages still inside of Gaza and the hostages that have been freed from Gaza. Um, don't forget the world, especially Palestinian Arabs and the Jewish people would be a much better place without the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. And hopefully that's the last time I'll have to say all of those long words. Guys, please subscribe. Get that conversation going down in the comment section below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We're here every single day with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.